Like, what inspires you? People doing things, you know, for the sake of making their own art and shocking people, you know. Why don't more people uh, make their own art, take life as art? Because we're always worried about what, what are they going to think and what is this going to, is this going to look bad? You know, what will make people, and I think that's part of art is that you make something and you go show it to somebody and either they love it, which is great, then you say, great, like, come with me and I'll make more of this for you. Or they say, I hate this, this disgusts me. And you say, hey, that's okay. It's not for you. And then you walk off somewhere else. Yeah. Well, and the, a part of it, the art, right, is like, we're this channel and this was the art we were going to bring to the world. It's not for everyone. No, it's not. Right? Like, so that everyone would make their own art. That inspires you. When you see people taking their self-expression and living that. And just going an extra mile for the sake of doing it. When we say these things, people think about starting a company and doing these things. What's a little thing? If, if you're, okay, so if you're, let's say you're a mechanic and you fix somebody's car. Uh, there are many days I've wished I was a mechanic. <laughs> so you and me both. <laughs> you fix someone's car, so that's what people are expecting. You know what people are not expecting? A little handwritten note with a mint inside saying, like, have a great day. So th That's it sounds art. to me like this is all about, like, we call it extra mile, right? But it's this living this life of you see yourself as a value contributor. Like, you're going to go as high over the fence as possible, not just barely get over it. Like, it's you want to wow people. Under promise wrote, and over deliver. Who wrote Raving Fans? It was it Seth Godin? What, did he do Raving Fans? Se no, no, no. That's uh, Ken Blanchard, I think. Okay, Ken, Ken Blanchard. Blanchard. He did Gung Ho, too. Okay. Yes. Raving but fans. Seth Godin is my like your go-to guy. My mentor from he his he's so, mentoring the whole world. Yeah, <laughs> he really is. He was so his and you know you, you listen to me. I'm sure there's a lot of similarities between what he believes and what I believe. His book Lynchpin and I, I so talking about giving art away. I decided I would email him one day, and I told him what I was doing, and he he never responds to me. He re, he emailed me back. So the last six months, I've been emailing him here and there, not asking for anything, I love it. giving things to him. And he's like, go, Omar. And I told him what happened to my company. He said, they, that was wonderful, and they were lucky to have worked with you. But anyway, his, the book that he wrote that Lynch changed. Pin. Yes, Lynchpin. That's, that I saved my so life. I read it so long ago, and I think I actually used it in one of my classes I taught. Okay, Lynchpin, remind us a little bit of the essence. So Lynchpin goes back to what I was mentioning, which is, lining up to take responsibility and being indispensable. And the only mm. way you be indispensable, and I, I love this, uh, this analogy, is that there are people who read maps and people who make maps. And at Mazor, the beauty about working in an organization like that, they want map makers. They don't have maps for you. You show up. Right, right, right. Yeah, that's what it was. In his book, I, I emailed him months ago. And I said, Seth, I love your work and it saved my life. And one day I'm going to tell you how. And I've been slowly telling him. The best, best way you can pay, pay an author back is take their work to heart and go do it and make it real. Oh, it's so true. It's so true.